good morning how are you happy thursday first of all i just want to get on here and i just want to say i apologize for tuesday's push and for wednesday's uh diy and decor video i was unable to do those videos due to the fact that my kids were home and they were sick they just were not feeling good at all and I had to tend to them because they are my first priority um and so i was not able to get those videos up but i promise you there will be a video up today obviously and tomorrow um and i'm going to give you guys some extra videos throughout the weekend just because i was not able to do those videos um they caught the bug and my daughter uh, her class um, the flu was kind of going around in her class and she came home and she was coughing and sneezing and just mucusy and she had a low grade fever. Um, she's still kind of recovering. She still has a lot of phlegm and congestion, but um, she's, we're fighting through it. We're fighting through it. And all three of my kids was home yesterday because Mikey, I had to take him to his eye doctor's appointment to get some new glasses. Um, and then Michaela woke up with a splitting headache and was not feeling good, coughing and sneezing and, you know, having all types of stuff going on. And then Nyla obviously was not, she has, she has, she hasn't been feeling good since Monday. Um, and she's still going to be home today because she's still not fully recovered. So y'all keep me in prayer. I've just been running around, um, trying to, you know, help them to feel better and, doing the mama, mama bear thing and, you know, giving them soups and medicine and all that good stuff. So I do apologize that those videos were not go up, did not go up. But like I said, I definitely will have some videos up for you guys. I'm starting to feel a little congested and I'm just like, Lord, I am ooh, healed in the name of Jesus. So um, y'all keep me prayed up for strength and agility and uh for god to continue to touch and heal my babies so let's get into this word today thank you guys so much for joining me welcome back to my channel and i'm not even gonna make this a long intro let's just get into this word so today we are talking about mental illness yes we're talking about mental illness. We're still on the in the process of talking about healing and different forms of healing, right? So mental illness is a form of sickness. Um, according to the Mayo Clinic and you know the psychiatric um journals and things like that, it is a form of sickness and it affects your of obviously your mental. And so I want us to get into this this um, today because, you know, as Christians, I don't think we talk about mental in illness too much. And you may think that you're not, you know, being affected by it. But in some way, shape or form, we're all affected by it. We Whether you are going through it or somebody that you know is affected by it, it affects you even more more and so i know i went through a form of mental illness um a, i want to say a, a year ago actually last year i was i was heavily going through it um just the feeling of being lost and just depressed for absolutely no reason um you know a few years ago anxiety was just like just taking over my life and I had to figure out what in the world is going on. And I had no idea that it was called mental illness um, or a mental disorder. And I went to the doctor and they tried to, you know, give me um, Xanax and prescription and anti-anxiety medications. And I was just like, no, I'm not, no. I, I come against that. I do not have anxiety and I am not depressed. Um, I remember one time I went to the hospital three, three days in one week because I was having palpitations so much. Like the least little things like just got me just having palpitations in my heart. And I had no idea what was going on. I had no idea what was triggering it. I had no idea what was happening. Um, 
And I just felt if I was washing the dishes or if I was overly tired, if, you know, if I didn't drink water, if my potassium was low, I mean, it was just a bunch of different things that affected it and and or triggered it and i didn't know what it was and so the last time i went to the hospital i will never forget it i went to the hospital and they were just like there's nothing wrong like there's nothing wrong with you and i'm just like but there's got to be something because i keep having these palpitations and if you have ever had palpitations it feels like you're literally having a heart attack or that your heart is jumping out of your chest and your brain is like you're have your your palms are sweaty you you don't know your heart is racing your thoughts is going and it's just it feels debilitating and i was having that and when i went to the hospital the last time they couldn't they obviously the first second or third time they couldn't find what was going on my my um they took my blood cultures my levels were were fine you know my potassium was fine all these things was good and they just couldn't find what was going on and I remember this guy he was dressed in like full white and he had like a rolling you know those rolling hospital beds and he came in with like a chart in the room and the nurse was in the room with me and he stood there at the end of the bed while I laid in the bed and um I remember him saying, is this the one? And the nurse said, no, this is not the one. She's not, not today. This is not the one. And I remember asking her, like, when he left the room, I was like, you know, who's that? Like, what is that about? And she was just like, oh, that's um, such and such his name from the psychiatric ward. Um, he came in because he thought that you were you know basically going to be admitted into the psych ward they thought i was crazy um and so it was it had to have been god because they saw that i was coming in so frequently in one week they thought i literally was going crazy but i wasn't it was just i did not know what was happening and then it just kept happening and this is when i had the daycare and the stress was was mounting up and it was just a lot i own my own daycare business for those of you that don't know and the stress was mounting up and it was just overwhelming i had 16 kids daily and the noise factor and the fact that i never took a break we never took vacations like that we took staycations but we never took like a real vacation because we were constantly going and working at the daycare and building it and while it was highly successful while we were getting calls for kids on a daily basis it was a lot on my health and it took a toll on my health. It took a toll on my mental psyche and I didn't know what was happening. I started to break down mentally. Um, I was having palpitations. I started to feel depressed. I started to lash out against my husband. I wanted a divorce because I felt like he didn't understand me. You know, I was talking to him and he just was not understanding what I was feeling. I just, at that time, I couldn't stand him. I. It it was I I had a feeling of hate like I started to hate him I started to resent him um, and it was it was real I felt like I couldn't um, control the things that was going through my brain like my thoughts started to take over um, the devil was sending like negative thoughts to my mind and you know telling me like my husband is not good to me and he doesn't understand what I'm going through and he doesn't even try to understand what I'm going through and like I started to hear voices in my head I started feeling like I wanted to commit suicide I mean it was it was crazy and this was all happening last year um, it was all happening the year before 2018. It was happening. It, it started to feel like I was not myself. I was just like, I did not know who I was. And I'm just basically giving you guys my testimony because I'm telling you mental, mental, mental illness is real. And as Christians, we feel like because we serve God and, you know, we, we, we're so holy and all this stuff that that stuff doesn't affect us. But indeed it does, right? Because I'm going to tell you how it affected me and how I got out of it. And so all those things started to happen and I started to spiral, just spiral down, down, down. 
and I started to veer away from God. I didn't want to read no scripture. I didn't want to pray. I didn't want to do any of that. It got worse because instead of me pulling closer to the Lord, I started to pull away from him, right? And when you are out of his presence or when you are away from God, there's nothing that he can do. He cannot force himself or will not force himself on you if you don't want him. If you don't want him, he's still going to be there, but you're not going to feel his presence. You're not going to be able to tap into what it is that he wants to offer you so his healing was always there but i just never tapped into it because i didn't know what was happening and so eventually eventually good things was happening in my life my business was increasing my business was successful my family was healthy right um we were in the process of purchasing this home so we were paying debts off we were you know paying off school loans and just everything right so the money was coming in but it was going out all at the same time because we were paying all these debts that we had all these school loans we were paying off and trying to get my credit score to go higher and trying to save up for a down payment and it just was a lot of stress added in with paying bills and taking care of three children and a husband and being a stay-at-home mom at the time while I was running my in-home daycare and taking care of 16 children on a daily basis. Dealing with parents that some of them were just not in tune to their children's behaviors and all these things and at the same time going to church but feeling like I don't belong. Feeling like I don't belong in church right it was overwhelming the stress was mounting up and it was absolutely overwhelming and i remember i had a breakdown and i it was during nap time and my husband and i i was sitting at the kitchen island in the old house and my husband was sitting at the table and he was you know on his phone doing something it was nap time so we had two hours to just chill and um, I was doing some paperwork and I remember him turning to me and um, saying to me, do you want to be married? And inside of me, I was feeling like, no, I don't I don't want to be married anymore. I want to be done like I can I can do better all by myself. Right. I want to just be done with you. I don't want to deal with you no more. I can't stand you. You don't you, I don't like you. On the inside. And then he said to me, do you want to be married? And I, I said, what do you mean? He said, I just want to know, do you want to be married? I said, why are you asking me the question? He said, well, because it seems like we are growing apart. And it seems that you just, you know, you're, you, you just want to not be married or you want to be by yourself or, you know, all these, whatever is going on and you're not, you're not talking. And I remember saying to him, I am talking to you, but you don't listen to me. And we started getting into a conversation and I said to him, I don't want to be married. I don't. I want a divorce. I want a separation. And I remember him looking at me with this look in his eyes like, this is not my wife. Something is wrong with my wife. And then he said to me, he said, okay, well, if you want a separation, then I'll step away and whatever it is that you're dealing with, you know, you deal with, but I'm here if you need me. But if you want a separation, we'll do, you know, we'll go through the separation or whatever. And I said, okay. I got up and I went upstairs and I sat in the family room and I started bawling. Okay. I started feeling like what is happening like my life was literally spiraling out of control and i did not know what to do to combat that my marriage is about to just die right my my relationship with my husband is dying my whole family is about to be split apart based on a decision or a choice due to all the stuff that i'm going through in my head and in my heart and to make a long story short we talked I mean we had several conversations 
about what was happening. And then he said, you know what? I figured it out. I figured it out. He said, we need some time together. We need a break and we need some time together. And I remember us taking a break from daycare. Um, I went to the doctor and I was telling the doctor all these things that was happening. And she said to me, I need you to take a break. I want you to take a week vacation, shut down the daycare and just take a break. If you don't take a break, I'm going to pull you out myself. I said, okay. So we gave out the letters to the parents a month in advance and we closed down the daycare for a, month, a week and we took a break. And that week was the most terrifying week of my life because here lying, I was face to face now, no daycare, no stress. I was face to face now with my husband and face to face with this issue of wanting to have, wanting to be separated, right? And so we were talking and going through the motions and stuff like that and we talked about it and we really figured out that I was going through depression. I was depressed y'all and I had no idea why. We figured it out though. It just didn't happen overnight. It was, it was a bunch of different things that brought me to that space. And it stemmed from us closing down our daycare the first time and moving to Georgia. Because what happened in Georgia, and I'm gonna do a video on that, but what happened in Georgia caused me to go into a depressive mode. We moved to Georgia and we lost everything. We were there for a year and a half. We lost everything. We lost our car. We, you know, we almost, our home here in New York, we lost our home, almost lost our home. I'm sorry, we were in foreclosure because our tenants failed to pay the rent. Um, we basically, we couldn't make ends meet. We got evicted from our apartments, three different apartments. Um, we just was not making any money. I mean, we was making money, but it was going out the window. We couldn't pay our bills. We, you know, just, it was just a mess. So the last apartment we, we lost and we were literally two weeks away from being homeless. And I remember sitting in, a, in, in the vehicle that we had and in, in a parking lot, a hotel parking lot. And I remember going to the, the, the receptionist at the hotel and asking them how much does it cost for a hotel room for a week? Because we were literally about to be put out on the street. Three kids. And I remember coming back in the car and I told my husband how much it cost. And he was working at the time. So he said to me, you know what, babe? Why don't you and the kids go to a shelter and I will sleep in the car? That was the deciding factor. And I remember looking in the back and looking at my kids and I was just like, no, no, we're not breaking up. We're not splitting up the family. My kids are not going into a shelter. We're not doing that. This, we're not about that life. And going back to the apartment, and I called my mom, and I just started breaking down on the phone. Like, I I just lost it. I started breaking down on the phone. And it was just like a year of stuff just piling up, building up. You know, I remember even driving to work at one point and almost committing suicide. Like, I almost drove off of the road. And I pulled over on the side of the road, and I started crying out and just asking God, why are we going through this? Why are we going through this? We are children of God. Why are we going through this? We stopped tithing. We, we used our tithe to pay our bills and it got worse. We just was never, ends was just not meeting. We just couldn't pay our bills. And we was using our tithes to buy groceries. I mean, it was a lot that year and a half, 2012 to 2014. It was it was tough. The whole 2013 was tough. 2012, we moved down 2012, July of 2012 to Georgia. And 
from there all the way through 2013, the end of 2013, we moved back to New York. My mom on the phone, when I was crying to her, she said to me, come. She's like, come home, come home. We did that. We packed up everything that we had because we pawned everything that we what that was valuable to us we pawned everything my husband gave me a beautiful beautiful um ring for our anniversary and i had to pawn it because we didn't have any money to pay for food or anything like that and i remember my brother moving down to georgia and he gave me 500 dollars. and with that 500 dollars, we used it to drive back to my parents house and we, from there, we spent seven months and it was, it was great at the same time because I was with my family and that comfort of home, but it was a living hell all at the same time because my personal world came crashing down and I wasn't saying anything. I wasn't talking. So all that stuff was just building up, building up in me and caused me to be depressed. And I thought that when we moved back, I had gotten over it, but I didn't. I didn't cry out to God about it. I, I just, I think I was numb to that feeling of poverty. I was numb to that feeling of not making it, being in my 30s and just was like, what am I doing in life? All this stuff, having three children, having a child that had Down syndrome. So it was a lot of different challenges and difficulties and stressors and that was affecting me. And it affects my husband differently. My husband cried out. He let it out. I never did. Cause I thought I was fine. So over the years that started affecting my mental, right? Because I never let it out. I never cried out. I never seek God. I never even talked to anybody about it. I never went to a therapist. I didn't. I just never, I thought I could deal with it on my own. And so depression kicked in, anxiety, anxiety took over my life. And I was at a point where I was just like, you know what? I am done feeling like, like this. I'm done with anxiety. I'm done feeling like this. I went to the hospital so many times. They thought my husband was abusing me because I was depressed. I guess I showed symptoms of just depression and shutting down and just all that. My husband never laid hands on me, never disrespected me, never physically, mentally, socially, spiritually, emotionally, never abused me. My husband always encouraged me. He is always in my corner. But I couldn't. I had resentment towards him because I felt like for me, as a man, you should be able to take care of your family. Like we shouldn't be going through this. I mean, it just was, it was a lot. It was a lot, you guys, it was a lot. And I'm telling you, it affects us women. It affects us, it does. And if you think that you're not affected or will never be affected by it, listen, I'm telling you, get your mind right, it affects you. And so I have learned how to combat depression. I have learned how to combat anxiety. And that is through the word of God. It's through the word of God. I got tired of it. I started using the word. I repented to God. I gave my, I gave my life back to him and I started using his word to come back this thing. And I was just like, okay, this is an attack from the devil himself. Like he's trying to take me out because of the purpose that is on my life. Okay. And so I started reading scriptures about depression and anxiety. And you know, the Bible, the Bible tells us to be anxious for nothing, but by, but in everything with prayer and supplication, give it to God. And I started reading scriptures about it and I started to seek God about it. And I started to write it out in front of me, all the healing scriptures on depression, all the healing scriptures on anxiety. I started to write it out, right? Because that was the only way that I know that I could come back that. He did it for me before when I needed physical healing. Why wouldn't he do it for me when I need mental healing? And so that's what I did. 
And I want to read to you here about mental illness, mental disorder. The definition for mental disorder is a wide range of conditions that affect your mood, your thinking, and your behavior. Okay? It is mental. It's in here. It's all in here. And if you can kick it in here, you can kick it anywhere in your life. Let me tell you, it is all mental. We have to know the devices of the enemy. And when he comes in like a flood, we have to know that God is going to lift up a standard against his lying behind. All right? Because you are more than enough. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. And when the enemy tells you that you are nothing, when he tells you that you are not going to make it, when he tells you that God does not love you, do not believe him because he is a liar. The Bible said that he is the father of lies. Okay? So do not believe anything that he say to you because he is a liar. He tried to take me out. The Bible said that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but that I come, Jesus comes, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, right? We got to use this. We got to let our minds, let our minds be in Christ. The Bible said, let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus, right? We got to let our minds be renewed by the word of God so that we can think like him and become like him and do what he wants us to do and be whom he wants us to be, right? The devil uses his devices and depression and anxiety, they are the devil's devices because God did not give those to us. He didn't give us depression. He didn't give us all these negative thoughts. God is a God of love and he's not going to pour into your mind things that are negative that's going to kill you. He gives you life, right? So that we can have it more abundantly. And so we have to focus on the word of God. I'm reading it from, I'm, I'm coming from the Mayo Clinic mental health um, journal. And it's saying that there are different forms of mental health. So you have clinical depression, you have anxiety disorder, you have bipolar, dementia, attention deficit hyperactive disorder, ADD, right? ADHD, schizophrenia, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, OCD, autism, post traumatic stress. I mean, it's a wide range it's a wide range of mental illness you guys and it's all caused by our thoughts by our thinking by the way that we think we have to come against those things right so now the, the we now we're going to combat it with the word of god so i'm reading from today's daily devotion and it's Breaking Anxiety's Grip by Michelle Banks Banksington, I believe that's her name. And it goes like this. The scripture is taken from 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. And it reads, as God walked with me in my journey to relinquish worry, anxiety, and fear, he showed me that exchanging them for his peace, we've been talking about peace since January, Exchanging them for his peace isn't an on-time event. It's a... Sorry, you guys. My daughter, I had to tend to her. She's still not feeling good, so I had to just go tend to her. She was coughing a bit. Um, okay, so it says, As God walked with me in my journey to relinquish worry, anxiety, and fear, he showed me that exchanging them for his peace isn't a on-time, a one-time event. It's a process. I'm grateful that the book of Psalms gives us a glimpse of David's struggle, right? So they all went through it. A bit like spiritual whiplash. In one breath, he laments about his worries and fears. And in the text, he he returns to profess, to profess his faith in God, who reigns bigger than all his fears. The best way to prepare to fight worry, anxiety, and fear. I'm going to add depression in there, is to learn God's word and plant it firmly in your hearts. Then we must take our thoughts captive. We have to pull those things down, y'all. 
and discern if they are from God or from the enemy. Now we know God is not going to give us anything that's going to hurt our minds, right? He's going to give us things that's going to build us, that's going to lift us up, that's going to exalt us. When they're from the enemy, we must exchange them for God's truth. Just as Paul instructs us in 2 Corinthians 10, many people have asked me how they can determine if their thoughts are from God or from the enemy. Here are some suggestions. When God speaks, he never contradicts the Bible or his character. That is why it's so important to know what the Bible says. Y'all, I'm telling you, if you don't take the time daily to get into the word, to know God's word, you will not be able to combat the enemy. I'm telling you, God is his word. Jesus is the word of God. And every time you open up this Bible, he is talking to you. He is telling you. He is teaching you about his character, about who he is. You learn about Jesus through his word. You learn about God through his word. You learn about Holy Spirit through his word. And that is the only way in this world that we are going to fight and win. Okay? God never condemns or shames us like the enemy does. God forgives us and his voice gently corrects us out of love to keep us in a right relationship with him. God leads us and stills us, whereas the enemy pushes and rushes us. So if you find yourself daily, just like nonstop, nonstop, just rushing throughout the day, rushing throughout the day, doing this, getting this done, going here, going there, and not slowing down and having peace and taking the time to just Usa, you know that has nothing to do with God. And, and, and we're living in such a fast-paced society that we got to work, we got to go to school, we got to do this, we got to do that, we got to have this, we got to make dinner, we get up and we run and we run and we... No time for God, no time to slow down, no time to even take a bath and, and rest, right? Self-care is important and I am learning about that because I lost who I was. I'm still, I'm just now learning about me again. Ever since I closed down the daycare, it has been the most wonderful and amazing experience. Did I experience strongholds? Did I experience hardships since I closed down the daycare? Absolutely, yes. But it was the process that I was going through of getting all the debilitating things out of my life, right? And now I'm at a place where I can truly say that, say that I have peace. I have found peace and I have peace in my life. And my mindset has been reset. It has been renewed. God has restored me. It's possible. God leads us and stills us, whereas the enemy pushes and rushes us. God's voice is comforting, calming, and reassuring, while the enemy worries, frightens, and stresses us. So when you feel that form of worrying and stress and fright and anxiety and, uh, and, and you know, feel like, oh my gosh, oh my, instability, instability, instability. When you don't feel stable, you know that is the enemy. While the enemy confuses, because confusion does not come from God, God encourages. God is never the author of confusion, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. To gain freedom from worry, anxiety, and fear, we must shift the responsibility for all outcomes to God. We must do it. We must choose not to be anxious, but to keep our peace by trusting that just as God causes the leaves to remain green and a crop to grow, so he will help us fulfill whatever he asks of us. Whatever he asks us to do, he equips us the, through. When it comes to keeping our peace, rather than letting our hearts become troubled or anxious, we have a choice to make. Choose to trust in God's powerful and loving provision or try to do it ourselves. 
right? I want to leave this prayer with you. It says, God, I want to take every thought captive in obedience to you. Help me to choose to trust in you instead of in myself. In Jesus' name, amen, right? We have to choose to trust God instead of choosing to trust in our thoughts and to trust it within ourselves. Because we can't work this thing out, out on our own. And if you go to the doctors, they're just going to put you on medications and it's just going to be worse. Because the anxiety or the anti-anxiety medications is not really anti-anxiety medications. They make it worse, right? And I don't care what anybody say. I'm on Xanax and I'm on this and I'm on that and it helps me. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't because there are other side effects that's attached to these medications that causes you to feel other things and causes you to think other ways, right? This is what we need. The word of God. We need, this is our pill. <laughs> this is our anti-anxiety, anti-depression, anti-worry, anti-fear is the word of God. The word of a God is our pill. Let let his word be your pill. Let his word be your medication. Take a dose every single day. And I guarantee you, your life will change. Your mind will be reset. Anxiety, fear, depression, worry, all that will be casted out of your life. I'm telling you what I know because it's what I've experienced and I've experienced God's healing power. Do I still sometimes get, you know, palpitations? A little bit but that's not due to fear that's not due to anxiety is now due to overworked and being tired so sometimes I do get it and I drink some water and I'm good I take a nap and I'm good so I am learning my body was out of whack my mental was out of whack and now I'm learning how to bring it all in how to bring it all back it's a process it's a process as women we go through things. Our bodies go through changes because we have children. We develop and, you know, we have all these things going through our bodies. Hormones and changes and life changes and resets and all these things that our minds and our bodies go through as women. Right? But the word of God is the only way that we can combat all these devices from the enemy. I want to take you to 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. And it says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up, up um, against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We have to learn to take captive of every thought. We have to learn that when those thoughts come in, that as soon as you those thoughts start setting in, you pull them down with the word of God. No, 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 no. The Bible says this. The Bible says that. You got to combat it. Just like Jesus combat the enemy in the in the um the wilderness when the enemy said, "I'll give you all of this if you bow down and serve me. I give you all of this." And Jesus said, "Wait a minute. Uh-uh. We going to serve God. We going to serve God and serve him only." right? He knew how to combat the enemy with his word, who, which is himself. <laughs> he is God, right? But it was just an example to show us that when the enemy comes in, we have to use the word of God to combat him because that is the only way that we can fight. It's a spiritual fight. It's a spiritual thing. But if you're not in Christ and if you don't know what you're facing if you don't know what it is you would think that it's a medical thing and the medical community has gained so much money so much money based off of all these diagnosis and pill popping and all these things you guys it's a device of the enemy it's a device he comes to kill still and destroy it's not new it happened in the Garden of Eden. It happened throughout the Bible and it still is happening today. His devices are not new. It's not new, 
right? But God's words is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So just like when the enemy can come in with the same devices, we can combat that with the same word. Amen. I want to read from my devotion, another devotion. Y'all know I love my devotional book from Sarah Young. So today's February 6th. So we're going to read and it coincides with the lesson that we're teaching today. And it says, come to me and rest. That scripture. Come to me, all who are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take up my yoke for it's easy and it's light. Okay. Come to me and rest. I am all around you to bless and to restore. Breathe me in with each breath. The way just ahead of you is very steep. Slow down. We just read about that. That the enemy comes to push and rush. Right? Slow down and cling tightly to my hand. I am teaching you a difficult lesson learned only by hardship. Lift up empty hands of faith to receive my precious presence. That is our gift his gift to us is his presence, you guys. Light, life, joy, and peace flow freely through this gift. Light, life, joy, and peace flows freely through his presence. And when we're in his presence, we can tap into that. When your focus turns away from me, you grasp for other things. So when we're not focusing, when we're not thinking on these things that's in the word, when we're not daily dining with God in his word, our focus gets turned to other things. So our focus gets turned to the things that causes us to be fearful and anxious and depressed and worry, right? Your, your bills are due. Your, you Debt collectors are calling you. You may be in foreclosure. You may be going through some things in your life like I am, right? But it's what you choose to focus on. Let me tell you, I'm going through some things in my life right now that is crazy, right? But at the same time, I'm going through some amazing and wonderful things because the wheat grows with the tear. So while on one side, this is happening and it can cause me to, to think on them and cause me to go in a state of worry and panic, I choose to focus on the good things that are happening in my life. I have a beautiful home. I have a beautiful family. I am saved by grace. Okay. I have life. I woke up this morning. God, I thank you for the breath of life. I choose to focus on these things. I choose to focus on the things that are good, the things that are kind, the things that are gentle, the things that are of good report. I choose to focus on the word of God. I choose to focus on the great things that God is doing in my life. And those things are now magnified in my life over the things that can cause me to have panic. I choose to focus on these things. Hence, it causes my mind to be at a place of joy and peace and life and love. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you, the word of God is freeing, guys. It is so freeing to be in a place of peace. And I feel like I want to cry right now because... Last year, I felt like I was dying. <laughs> Last year, I felt like I was dying. I felt like on the inside of me that I was dying. I felt like nobody understood what I was going through. I felt like I failed my family because I caused us to shut down our daycare. I caused us to go through financial hardship. I felt like it was my fault. And y'all, I'm telling you, it put me in such a space of depression that I almost ruined my marriage.
Y'all, I almost ruined my marriage. I almost ruined my family. I almost ruined my life because I was so down and out. And I'm crying out to you that if you are going through this, choose to, to hang on to God. Choose to think on God's word. Choose not to die. Choose not to die, but choose to live. Choose to live and let God's word penetrate you. I'm telling you, his word works. I have so much peace. I have so much peace, you guys. And while I was making the videos and all those things, I was going through hell with on, on the inside of me. I was going through hell. And I didn't know how, I didn't know why. And I had to, I had to, I had to cry out to God. And he heard my cry. He heard my cry. Little old me, he heard me. In my silent cries, he heard me. And I'm telling you, he restored me. And he delivered me. And I had to, to make a decision. I had to make a, de a decision that I'm going to choose to live. The enemy is not going to take me out. The enemy is not going to take you out. I want you to choose to live. Okay? I'm not telling you this to gain views. I don't care about that. I don't care about views. I don't care about algorithms. I don't care. I'm telling you this because it is real. I'm telling you this because every, people are going through it every single day, mental illness, and it's leading to death. And this is the enemy's devices. This is what he does. Okay, this is what he does. And I'm crying out to you all. Don't let him do it to you. Don't let him come in and tear up your families. Don't let him come in and ruin your marriages. Don't let him come in and kill you. Fight. Fight. You got to have a fight. You got to fight. You got to take it back by force. And you got to fight. And how you fight is through the word of God. You got to fight. You got to be strong. You can't be weak. You got to know who he is and know who God is. Know your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. Your kids are not your enemy. Your job is not your enemy. Your church is not your enemy. Your friends are not your enemy. We have an enemy and he is real and his name is Satan. His name is Lucifer, but we have a God. His name is Jesus. And he comes that he, that we may have life and have it more abundantly, but we have to choose life. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You got to choose. You got to choose. You drop the glowing gift of my presence as you reach for lifeless ashes. Return to me and regain my peace. And I'm going to give you some scriptures. Matthew 11 verses 28 through 29. 1 Timothy 2 verse 8 and Zechariah 1 verse 3. Y'all, this is serious. We're in a fight for our lives. 
We're in a fight for our families, our marriages. I'm telling you, I've never seen so many divorce rates. I mean, it so many divorces. I've never seen so many suicides. I've never seen so many children being diagnosed with depression. And I mean, I just, it, it's, it's overwhelming. But you have to know who your enemy is. And you have to know who our God is. Right. And some you may say, but I, I don't, you know, I, I don't believe in this stuff. OK, well, it's then it's not for you. You don't believe then it's not for you. I can't I can't make you believe you have to want to believe. But for those of you that do believe and know God. And you're going through this, you know that it's not right. It don't feel good. It, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't ring a bell with you this is this is real y'all mental illness is real in the church it's real in the church and i want to talk to my african-american brothers and sisters right now it's real in our communities and in our culture and in our children and in our husbands and our wives and our situations and circumstances it is real talk to somebody Talk to somebody if you need to. I know in our communities, our culture, therapy is shunned upon. But sometimes you need a non-biased person to talk to. And it's okay. It's okay to talk to somebody. If you need to talk to somebody, talk to somebody. Let it out. Don't hold on to it. Let it out. Talk to somebody. All right. Use the word of God to combat that. Find you a Christian therapist if you need to. But the word of God is all I need. It's all I need. Because I know that I can talk to him. I can go to him and I can talk to him about every. I talk to him when no one is home, when anybody is home. I open my mouth and I talk to him. And it may look like I'm crazy to my kids because I'm talking to myself, but I'm not. I'm talking to my father that sits on the throne. And I talk to my husband. I talk to my husband. Right? I talk to him. I also have a best friend. Her name is Carrie Ann. I talk to her all the time. You got to find somebody that you can open up to. Right? But you have to make the choice to choose God, to choose his word, and to stay focused in his word. We have to make that choice. So I think that this video is probably an hour, but that's okay. I want you to focus on the things of God. And if you are going through any of these, you know, anxiety, depression, worry, fear, whatever, I want you to know that you can just leave a comment down below and let's talk it out in the comment section. Let's open up a dialogue and talk about it amongst ourselves. Let's let this platform be used that we can talk and encourage and enlighten and lift and build and edify each other because the Bible said that we are to tarry one for another, right? I love you guys so much. If you have not yet accepted Jesus as your personal savior, if you don't know who he is, I would love to lead you into prayer. And I would love for you to say, to repeat after me, if you choose to. Father God, I come to you this morning and I repent of all my sins, God. I ask that you forgive me. I know that you are the son of God. I know that you died and you were raised in three days. And I know that you now live on the, you now sit on the right hand of the father. Father God, I want you to come into me and sup with me, Lord Jesus. I want you to overtake me with your presence, with your spirit, so that I can feel your joy, your peace, your life, and your love. Lord, lead me, walk with me take me through this journey that we call life and I will serve you all the days of my life I'm so grateful that I can now call you my savior and that I am now your child 
I thank you, Lord, for saving me. And I will serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, you are now saved. And welcome to the family of God. I would love, love, love to help you with this journey, with this walk. If you need some spiritual guidance or, you know, scriptures or anything like that, that can help you through your walk, leave a comment down below or you can email me at shoshanabowens um, at gmail.com and I will definitely get you some scriptures. Also, um, find yourself a church, a Bible-believing, Holy Ghost-filled church that speak and preach the infallible word of God. The Bible said, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. Find yourself a church that you can go to. You can get into the Bible studies and the prayers and get involved. And you can be strengthened and lifted up in your spiritual journey. All right. I love you guys so much. Also, I'm going to be changing this up a bit. Um, on Tuesdays, I've been getting a lot more requests to do to bring back the DIY videos. So Tuesdays is going to be our DIY um, sessions again. So we're going to be doing DIYs and crafts sessions on Tuesdays again. And then our push is going to be on Thursdays. And, and Thursdays, our push and our positive vibes is going to be on Thursdays. So I'm going to incorporate our prayers and Bible studies all together, just like we kind of did today. All right. So y'all let me know if you like that lineup. Everything else is still going to be the same, but I'm just taking push from Tuesdays and putting it to Thursdays and incorporating with the positive vibes. So that's what we're going to be doing. Let me know what you guys think about it and leave comments down below and let me know what y'all think about um, our Bible study today. I know that it helped me. I'm sorry y'all saw me with the ugly cry, but I just love y'all so much and I want you guys I just want y'all to, to be good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I love y'all and I care about you guys. I care about your personal well-being. I care about your overall mental. I care about it. I care about you. And I just want y'all to know that. So if I have to show my vulnerability and, you know, be transparent, that's okay with me because that's who I am. And I love y'all so much. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you have not yet done so. Hit that bell for new notifications. Double tap the bell so you can get all notifications. And don't forget to like and share this video with your social media networks, friends, families, dogs, cats, everybody. All right. I love you guys. Jesus is Lord. He loves you. He cares for you. And I love you too. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a wonderful, fantabulous day. Bye guys.